Hello. In this tutorial, I will show you about the basics about how to animate objects in 3D Studio Max. Before start, you should have a previous knowledge about the basics of 3D Studio Max. For this, you can check my other tutorials on the webpage www.macrotutorials.com. First at all, an animation is created when you quickly see a sequence of static pictures, ordered in the way that creates the illusion of movement. As this sample, you can see some pictures, here. Each picture is a frame of the video. If you see 24 frames per second, the image looks in movement. With more frames the video looks more fluid. This video only has 12 frames per second. Exist two main formats of video in TSC used in America and Japan that use 29.97 frames per second, and the format PAL used in Europe that use 25 frames per second. Well, create an animation in 3D Studio Max is very simple. I will explain it to you, using a sample. We're going to create an animation where the teapot moves from here to here. In the bottom of the window, you can see the time slider. You can move it to change the current frame in the animation in 3D Studio Max. Exist two modes to create the animation. One is the auto key mode, and the other is the set key mode. Let's try the auto key mode. So click on the button of auto key, here. Note that the button in the time slider becomes red, this indicates that we are creating an animation. Well, make sure that the time slider is in the frame zero. The first thing you have to do is locate the object in the starting position for your animation. Now move the time slider to the frame 30. Now, move the object to another place. Note that this indicator appears, at the frame 30 and in the frame 0, this is that we call keys, and is used by 3D Studio Max to create the animation. OK. This keys appears because the program is automatically recording any change in the scene. Well, our animation is ready, as we are using 30 frames, if you use the NTSC format the animation is going to last 1 second. To watch the animation, you have this buttons in the right bottom corner of the window. Click this button, go to start. This moves the time slider at the first frame, C. And this one, plays the animation. As you can see it's pretty simple, but the animation is pretty short. To stop the animation click on the same button that we just click, now it's showing the pause symbol. If you drag the time slider, can watch the animation as you want. Or watch it frame by frame, if you click this arrows in the time slider. Also, you can use the buttons in the section of animation. This two buttons, here, moves the animation frame by frame. And, this other button shows the last frame. If you click the button and key mode toggle, this one. This buttons changes. This buttons don't move to the next frame or the previous frame, instead this buttons move to the next key, like this. Or to the previous key. C. If you disable the button and key mode toggle, this buttons again works to move at the previous frame. Or to the next frame. Also, you can select accurately a frame if you write here, the number of the frame you want. Like this. Well, you can continue animating the scene. So, you only have to move the time slider to another frame, for example to the frame 60. And move the teapot. Note that the key indicator appears in the time slider. This indicators or keys are appearing automatically because we have enabled the auto key mode. Return the time slider to the frame 0. And, if you click play, you can see the new part of the animation. Remember that we are using the auto key mode, so, 3D Studio Max records any change in the scene. Let's move the time slider. And rotate the teapot. Now if we play the animation, click the button of go to start. And now on play animation. As you can see, the teapot starts to turn around from the beginning. Well, if you want that the teapot only rotates at the last part of the animation, just move the time slider to the frame 60, where the teapot stop moving. And rotates back the teapot, like this. This indicator changes. Play the animation. As you can see the teapot now starts to turn around only in the last part of the animation. Stop the animation. 
You can move the keys in the time slider. For example, at the key in frame 90, the teapot ends the rotation. If you move this key clicking on it and holding down while you move the key to the frame 100. Well, the teapot is going to turn around a little more slower. So, play the animation. If you want to make more slower the movement of rotation of the teapot, you can move the key of the frame 60 slightly forward, clicking on the key, holding it down, and moving it. Finally release the left mouse button, and is ready. Playing the animation you can note that the teapot turns slower, because the movement takes more frames, see? But, the second part of the animation, the second displacement is faster because now takes less frames. You can animate the teapot changing the size of the objects. But first we need more frames to create the animation. Include more frames is easy. Click the button and time configuration. And in this window, if you increase the end time, appears more frames in the time slider, or if you increase the length. Also increase the number of frames, or if you increase the frame count. There is more frames for the animation. Click OK. If you want that the teapot only grows from the 100 frame, you need an extra key, so move the time slider to the frame 100. And click on the set key button. This one. Move the time slider, for example to the frame 150. And risk all the teapot. Automatically appears the new key on the track bar at the time slider. If you play the animation. You can see that the teapot only starts to grow starting at the frame 100. If you want that the teapot to shrinks again. You can as always move the time slider and risk all the teapot. But exists a simple way, just hold down the key shift in the keyboard. And drag this key to a new position. Let's say the frame 200. If you play the last part of the animation, moving the time slider here and play, the teapot grows and shrinks. When you press the key shift, works like copy the key, but the result is inverse, so the teapot shrinks. To finalize it, create the animation, click again over the auto key button. In this sample we only animates one object, but you can animate so many objects as you want. Now, I will explain you how to animate objects using the set key mode. So, click on set key. This button, here. The button and the time slider become red, indicating us that we can now create the animation. As always the first thing we have to do, is move the time slider. The time slider is at the frame 15, so the object stays still for a moment. Now locate the object anywhere you want. Note, that doesn't appear automatically any key on the track bar below the time slider. This is the main difference with the auto key mode. In this mode you have to click on the set key button to create the keys. So, click on the set key button. And, here is the key. This tutorial will continue. Find the second part of this tutorial in www.macrotutorials.com.